Hi, everyone. This is Anthony P. And I'm Macy. Welcome to this video brought to you by the Center for Academic Literacy here at NTNU. Today, we're going to talk about how to write a good literature review, or lit review for short, for your academic paper. Many students think about lit reviews as a piece of homework in which they list as many references as possible to impress their readers with their diligence. However, that's not the point of a lit review. A lit review shouldn't be like a shopping list. Instead, it should connect your research with the wider context. That's right. Lists are not very meaningful in themselves, just like how clues don't tell a detective much without being put together. A good detective pieces clues together to solve cases, just like our friend, Detective Sherlock. Let's see how he works his magic. Hey, so how's that case about the multimillionaire going? You know, the one who's been blackmailed? Here are the clues I found. A burner phone and a footprint near the bin where the phone was discarded. Okay, so what? What do you mean, so what? I've got a bunch of clues. Well, we need to connect the clues and make some inferences so that they go from random pieces of information to meaningful clues. Like how? I checked the size of the footprint and matched it to the shoe sizes of the multimillionaire's employees. Turns out, only three of his employees wear that shoe size. I then checked their desk where I found a burner phone of the exact same model as the discarded one. Clearly, that's the blackmailer. Wow, that's... Pretty impressive. Sometimes I forget why I put up with you. Then you do things like this. What you do reminds me of how lit reviews are written in academic papers. Okay, stop. Okay, don't turn everything into a lesson. If I wanted to learn about lit reviews, there are books for that, such as the instant classic, Crack the Case, Not Your Head. Anyway, let's go get our money from the rich guy since we've cracked the case. Many students, like Dr. Watson tend to find it challenging to see the connection between pieces of information. If this sounds like you, then this chapter is for you. In this chapter, we will take you through the process of writing a good lit review. The first question that many would have is, how do you even start? Well, surprise, surprise! you might find that this process is not unlike cooking. That's right. If you can open a fridge, you can get started on your literature review. Step one, look into the fridge. If you're planning to cook, your first step would probably be opening a fridge to see what you have at home. After getting an idea of all the ingredients you can use, you can decide what to cook based on what you have. The first step of your literature review is similar. Get an overview of the possibilities before zooming in on one desired dish. At this point, reading widely allows you to form a basic understanding of the field and perhaps even come across new insights and information, which in turn give you new ideas. Armed with new ideas, you can then narrow down your focus and decide on what you will cook. Step 2. Decide what you're cooking. Let's say you find a piece of chicken when you open the fridge. It's decision time. Would you like to make a chicken salad or Kung Pao chicken? In the context of your research, this means that you can begin to decide on your research topic and scope by forming research questions. More simply, what do you wish to discuss in your paper or thesis? Or what problem do you wish to solve? Your research questions might still change, but just write them down first. This can be very helpful in helping you select and organize relevant materials. Step 3. Instagram-worthy plating. Presenting your lit review is very much like how you presented your cooking. You want the dish to be appealing when your Instagram followers or readers see it. Now, how do we do that with a lit review? We recommend that you organize your lit review by allowing each research question to govern one subsection of your lit review. Think of this idea as the idea of banchan, or side dishes served by many Korean restaurants. Each plate only contains one item so that you can fully appreciate the flavor of each individual dish. One good way to organize your lit review is to use subheadings. Each subheading may be considered a separate dish 
or a separate subsection which discusses one aspect of your topic, like this. In this approach, the sum of all the subsections provides a potential answer to the entire research topic you're investigating. There we go, a piping hot dish, or lit review. Of course, it's not that easy. In the next section, we'll be sharing some other pointers you can try for a good lit review. Synthesis. One key question that a lot of students have is this. Since a lit review shouldn't just be a list of references, what should it be? The answer is synthesis. What is synthesis? Well, performing synthesis in lit reviews means that we should identify trends and patterns in what we're reading and link them together by showing how different studies are similar or different. When doing this, you can and should offer your own take on the information you found to demonstrate your critical thinking skills. Compare and contrast. This diagram shows how you can do this in a particular subsection of your lit review by comparing and contrasting different sources. First up, you begin your lit review with an opening statement to focus your reader's attention on the issues at hand. Next, you may discuss some common ground shared by the sources you found. Then, you may talk about discrepancies among the sources, offer a brief explanation of what the respective viewpoints are. Finally, offer a mini conclusion for this segment. How to structure the lit review Another thing you can think about in terms of structuring the lit review is to put the most important point first. This is really simple, because it's like dating. Scoring a date, presenting the most interesting stories first. No, really, think about it. How do you try to impress your date in the early stages of dating? That's true. Speaking from experience, Many people lead with their most interesting life stories. I've personally heard wild travel stories, accounts of borderline illegal behavior, and even one in which the guy said he almost set fire to his family cemetery by accident or so he claims. If we break the strategy down, it looks like this. Let's say you have three stories to share. Typically, you would start with the one that you think is the most interesting. Then you would go through the other stories and hope that you've been interesting enough to score a date. Applying the same logic to a lit review, this is how you can organize your points. You can begin your lit review with the most important point you have to make. Besides making it the first point, also give it more airtime so that you can go into more depth on it. Subsequently, introduce your other points before wrapping up the segment with a quick conclusion. The conclusion should state that Having considered all the different points, you've decided to go with A. What we've shared is just a tiny fraction of some of the things you can look out for when writing your lit review. Here's a quick recap of what we've just discussed. To get started, you can read widely to get a sense of where your field is before narrowing it down to something you would like to investigate. Then you would have to think about synthesis and organization. To synthesize materials effectively, you can compare and contrast different options made across different sources. You can divide the lit review into different subsections, with each one answering one research question. You can also lead with your most important point and give it the most space before moving on to relatively less important points. We hope that these pointers have been useful to you. The Lit Review is indeed not easy to write, but it's like visits to the dentist. We might not enjoy these visits, but they're important. If you need more pointers on how to write a good Lit Review, pick up a copy of Crack the Case, Not Your Head, a beginner's guide to solving your thesis puzzle published by the Center for Academic Literacy at NTNU. Again, thank you for watching. This is Maysheen and Anthony your friendly writing buddies at the Center for Academic Literacy at NTNU. Feel free to say hi when you see us on campus. See, see you around. around.